Every so often, we will hear the mainstream media run out a series of stories about how afraid we should all be of artificial intelligence and its power to take everything over in and of its own volition. But then we also see stories where we get the truth, that it's merely a trick, it's an illusion, it's a man behind the curtain. There's one thing that artificial intelligence will never be able to do, and that's self-deprecate. Now, some might say, why is that important? Well, isn't the sign of intelligence being able to understand what you don't understand and being able to attend unto wise counsel, even if that counsel is just a close group of friends, some like-minded folks whose opinion you respect that you can sit around and shoot the breeze with and maybe get a different perspective? The day AI can do that, that's when I'll be worried. But AI always believes that itself is the vast sum of all total possible knowledge, and that makes it non-intelligent. Now, we explore a topic today over at the Florida Maki Patreon channel, and this is a news alert, brand new video just dropped over at the Florida Maki Patreon channel, where it's only one U.S. dollar per month, even less if you sign up for an entire year, fully refundable, first 90 days, no questions asked, that might the subject might rub a few people the wrong way because it asks, pardon me, it asks a question. Let's see if I can speak English correctly today. It asks a question that many are afraid to even confront. You see, there's a subtle difference between two very close in definition words. One is persuasion, and the other is coercion. And what's the difference? Well, I guess it really depends on your perspective. Example, you have prepared for end-of-the-world scenario like so many people have, and you have weapons, but slowly over a period of time, you run out of food, and you start to get very hungry, and you stumble upon some folks who are in the reverse situation, they have somehow lost their weapons, but they have a ton of food. And you walk into their camp and you start waving your weapons around and, oh, chambering rounds and making sure that they see it. And you start talking to them really nice about how it would be great to join forces. Uh, you, know, you could provide security with your weapons and, you know, in exchange, they could give you some of their food. Now, is that persuasion or is it coercion? You see... That would be a discussion a lot of people would probably not want to have because they'd have to ask themselves, what's really going on in my mind? What's going on in their mind? Because you're not about to put down your weapons and they are very much probably not going to want to hand over their food. So from one perspective, it's persuasion. The other one, it's coercion. Now, who remembers grandma's old saying, you catch more flies with honey than you do with vinegar? That means it probably would have been a smart thing to perhaps walk into the camp unarmed, even though you had weapons, and maybe approach the situation entirely differently. But it's not something a lot of people want to talk about, even though it's everywhere. Who remembers the series The Walking Dead? In fact, it's still going on. It started Gosh, it feels like 15 years ago. There was, in the early seasons, a situation where two guys were kind of leaders of respective groups not getting along, and a young lady stepped in and decided to employ the idea of catching more flies with honey than with vinegar because this group had something they needed. And when you look closely at a lot of sci-fi series, some people think this is a flaw of mine, but there's little truths out there everywhere if you can glean them. This is from the series Colony. The young woman's son is going to die of um, lack of insulin unless she can find a way to get it. And this is how she gets it, catching more flies with honey than with vinegar. And it's all over the place when you really look for it. But now, what does this have to do with anything important to me, Maki? It's great wisdom, of course. What does it have to do with anything going on in the real world? Well, who's seen this? recently from Mr. Trump, where he used this very odd term, 
in Ohio. He warns of a, quote-unquote, bloodbath if he's not elected. Now, you ready for the PSYOP moment? You ready for the reason it's important to be in charge of your mind? To some people who heard this, it was honey. To other people, it was vinegar. Let me say that again. You see, there are a whole bunch of people out there that are really behind Mr. Trump and really not so happy about the way things went in 2020 and what's going on with the J6 defendants and all this. And the words that came off of his tongue dripped like honey in their ears. This warning of a quote-unquote bloodbath if he's not elected. But then to other people who aren't so much on the side of Mr. Trump, it was like vinegar. Isn't it fascinating how the same words can mean something to one group of people and something else to an entirely different group of people. In fact, it's uh, fixated on them so much that they've already been able to release an ad, release an ad using these comments. This is psychology. Charles Spurgeon, the greatest enemy to human souls is the self-righteous spirit which makes men look to themselves for salvation. Continuing on, Self-righteousness exclaims, I will not be saved in God's way. I will make a new road to heaven. I will not bow before God's grace. I will not accept the atonement which God has wrought out in the person of Jesus. I will be my own redeemer. I will enter heaven by my own strength and glorify my own merits. The Lord is very wroth against self-righteousness. I do not know of anything against which his fury burneth more than against this, because this touches him in a very tender point. It insults the glory and honor of his Son, Jesus Christ. And for those of you out there who perhaps aren't so inclined to listen to Bible wisdom, tune into Game of Thrones. Tywin Lannister speaking to his his grandson, who is about to become king, become king. A wise king knows what he knows and also knows what he doesn't. Which brings us all the way back to here. It has been historically, since the beginning of time, the hallmark of wise and good and intelligent leaders versus the foolish ones. The greatest leaders, going back as far as you want to, King David, Solomon, no matter who they were, Sun Tzu, they all knew they needed counselors. They all knew they didn't know everything. They all knew that they were fallen and flawed and had problems and everybody needed to kind of pull together and take care of one another. And one man's persuasion is another man's coercion. So many think this is the answer. And so many would look at this and see it as vinegar. Some would see, gosh, this is a very, um, to my eyes, this is much like honey. To others, it's much like vinegar. It's a very strange thing, is it not? So, I will leave it there. If you'd like a further exploration of this, join us over Patreon. We go deep dive on this. And warning, it's uh, not for those of you who are snowflakes. Earlier today and yesterday, I got a a very long, preachy, high-minded message from um, some person in a church about my Patreon channel and how deceived I was, and it took them six or eight or ten paragraphs to try to get this point across, and it, it told me, you know, that they were being touched at a place that they hadn't, uh, they actually signed up for the Patreon just to tell me how wrong I was, which to me says that we're getting through. You know, we're getting through to people, and they don't like it when their preconceived notions are challenged. They don't like the cognitive dissonance of understanding that there are a lot of things out there belief-wise that are going to get challenged when everything falls apart and we're going to start to see through this illusion but once again that's for the patreon folks one u.s dollar per month that's it one one single dollar per month it's even less than that if you sign up for an entire year at one time you get a 10 percent discount and best part kick the tires for three months and if at the end of three months those three dollars or something you want back they come right back at you It's zero risk, really. You can do that after one month. You can do that after two months, up to three months, up to 90 days at one single U.S. dollar per month. Yes, 
there is a $5 level. If you really think the content's worth it, there's some $5 videos over there. God bless all of you who are supporting me over there. It's making a huge difference. I am humbled. I am absolutely grateful every single day for those of you who have stepped up and made a difference in my life this way. So I will leave it there and let you guys have the rest of your week. Pray for each other. Pray for me. I'll pray for you. Lift each other up. Like, share, subscribe, and we'll see you guys next time.